Welcome back to Northwest Digital News. Kevin Hunter, Chris Bornstad, and Kyle Torgerson. And we're going to share with you a few keto kitchen cooking tips here today on the keto broadcast. Keto kitchen cooking tips. And you guys, you know, for those of you who um, made this keto journey, and somewhere along the line, you had somebody tell you, you can't have any bread anymore. You're done. Well, wrong. We're going to show you how to actually have some bread and more importantly what types of bread uh, you can have on a keto diet and I'm not saying that you should even eat this types of bread every single day of the week like a lot of people will have bread associated with their breakfast like toast and eggs and then have bread at lunch like a grilled cheese sandwich and then they'll have bread again at dinner like maybe a sub sandwich so I'm not talking about doing that that's that's insane don't don't do that, you guys. That just sounds like it's going to hurt my stomach. Yeah, it will very much hurt to do that kind of... Well, that's a typical American diet, but don't go doing that kind of bread. So we do this uh, once or twice a week in our keto diet. And for all you keto purists who believe that zero bread is the right mark... Uh, we've been doing this for a lot of years, you guys. Keto purist. We got a we got a little bit of a clue about this, so go ahead and make comments on the thread if you must, and say you can never have bread and be on a keto diet. Well, you get to be full of baloney all on your own. All right, Kyle, do we have it? Are we going to share with people about weather today? Do you want to tell people? We could. Yeah. Do you got something about about weather before we get started here with our our beautiful uh, keto bread today? Yeah, okay. okay. Today is going to be a high of 56, a low of 36. It's going to be rainy today. This week you can expect some rain, partly cloudy, um, but it's going to average around the 60s this entire week. Hopefully uh, it, it, this is wrong and it burns away and all <laughs> that is just gorgeous sunset. Yeah, Thursday, Friday, sunny. Saturday look uh, pretty stinking awesome. And, and it's like clear and sunny out. I don't see any rain. See, well, whenever it's dotted, though, under the clouds, like you see over there, uh, Chris, between you and Kyle, and then here on Wednesday, here closest to me here, whenever you see, like, the dotted, that just means scattered showers mm. and no snow see, in the forecast. another problem is we're, we live in a thing called a banana belt. I'm so banana. heard. So it's like, this is the weather. Just kidding. It's not the weather at all. So people are like, yeah, that's going to snow like 10 inches today, and it doesn't snow at all. Did you wear your banana belt? Yeah, actually, it's uh, right here. Oh, very nice. <laughs> very nice. He <laughs> got it from one of his friends. It's true. His I friend think. Luke. Yeah, Luke. I actually haven't talked to Luke in a while. Talking about keto. You know what? Yeah. I'm kind of tired of the weather. Let's get rid of the weather. Yeah. We're done with that. Tired? How tired, tired are you? I'm, I'm so tired. tired. I'm just going to roll this commercial. About tired. Hey there, have you heard Longview Auto and Tire is giving away free tires? That's right, as their first year of business comes to a close, Roy and Ruben Byman of Longview Auto and Tire want to thank their customers for their generous support with a free tire giveaway. Here's all you have to do. Visit Longview Auto and Tire today at 655 Commerce Avenue near Tenant Way and fill out an entry form. Or go online to longviewtiresales.com forward slash giveaway. Get rolling on free tires from Longview Auto and Tire today. Visit website for complete details. News. All right. If you're not tired and you need to be tired, go to Longview Auto and Tires. Longview Auto and Tires. I yeah. also want to say congratulations to uh, Jeffrey Rip. He's our new top fan. You can see by the <laughs> way it says top fan at the top. He has there you go. Tire. Yes. Uh, regular followers get that top fan mm -hmm. designation. And uh, yeah. Look at that. He's one of the newest members to the top fan category. So way to go, Jeffrey Rip. <laughs> Good news. Yeah. Well, you know what, Jeffrey? We got some great food tips to share with you today, and they are absolutely delicious. And I'll, I'll tell you what, um, this, so we're going to be talking about sourdough bread. And Kyle, why don't you put up on the back screen this article about sourdough bread? For, because for the keto purists that are out there who believe you should eat no bread whatsoever if you're on a proper keto diet, um, you will be happy to know, and people who don't know much about bread products, you'll be happy to know that sourdough bread is actually on the low glycemic list index. And why? Because of how your body uses the carbs in here. And there's also a way to, to increase the amount of resistant starch that your sourdough bread already has in it. So 
Um, you can actually even take a greater percentage of the carbs and turn them into resistant starch, which if you've done, if you followed any of the shows here in the past and done any research on resistant starch, you find out that resistant starch is actually not digested in the stomach and the small intestine. It's actually used in the large intestine and creates no insulin response whatsoever. So in this pan that we have out here in front of us are three slices of wonderful sourdough bread. And they have been uh, sitting here in a butter bath. That's like an essential piece that you have to, you have to do. You gotta fry it in butter on both sides. There you go. The, the wonderful butter bath. And as you can see, they are a nice golden yellow. They've been sitting here. I can even see the butter uh, frying here in the bottom. Um, yeah, in a wonderful bath of butter. So um, the other thing I wanna mention here before we get into the food stuff is that each of us have a nice, wonderful hot beverage on our desk here in front of us. And it happens to have a half teaspoon of coconut oil in it. Which <laughs> Yay. Yay. My coffee should be untouched. <laughs> <laughs> it happens to have a half teaspoon of coconut oil, unrefined organic coconut oil, and it's full of MCTs, medium chain triglycerides. So you want to consume plenty of unrefined coconut oil and butter in your keto diet. But put a little half a teaspoon. In fact, that will not break your fast when you wake up in the morning if you put a half teaspoon of coconut oil into your cup of coffee if you start the morning with wow. coffee. How so about half a meatball? Not a half a meatball. That's Sweet, doesn't. I'm still good. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, a half a meatball is a no-go. Oh, oh, fuck. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm not a big fan of coconut myself, but drinking this coffee, it's actually quite delicious. Maybe yeah. I'm used to like the stuff that Stephanie makes, like the, with the shakes and the... Um, what's what, the hemp seeds mixed yeah. in? But yeah, man. Don't get me wrong. I like coconut, just not in my coffee. Just not in your coffee. I really like, you know, pineapple on my pizza, but that's another conversation. All right, so <laughs> let me share with you something about this bread that we did to even lower its glycemic level even further from where it already is. So sourdough, if you do some research on it, you find out that it has all kinds of health benefits, and it's basically the best bread ever. And the reason being is because of its, the other um, health properties that it has to it. But we took this bread, uh, it was actually in the freezer last night. So that's what you wanna do with your sourdough bread is put it in the freezer and here's why. Because as uh, any starch goes through heating cycles and cooling cycles, it's what helps convert uh, the current starches which can be converted to sugars, use the sugars in the body. It helps convert them to resistant starches. So by freezing your bread, the heating cycle in frying the bread actually creates a longer, from frozen to a nice uh, heated crispy piece of bread, fried in butter. So now we added a whole bunch of fat to it. This is part of the reason why one slice of bread is going to be way more than enough for what we're doing here. So Chris, let's go ahead and crank the heat up a little bit on that. We've had that on low. I'm going to add some more of this wonderful it begins. grass, uh, grass-fed butter. When you say, let's turn the heat up. Turn up to like 350. Well. Can you see it over there? I think I got it, but you know. Well, you guys have that. Uh, Clinton says, I'm with you on everything so far. However, I'm like Duck Commander, Phil Robert Robertson. I like my coffee as it is, black. Yeah, that's why I said Clinton. Nobody messes with my coffee, except I for this morning. <laughs> <laughs> we mess with this coffee because you like, you have to have some coconut oil in there. And he said, I, I can I can survive. Yeah. It's it's acceptable, isn't it? No, I think we just went over how it wasn't acceptable to mess with my, mess with my coffee. He's, he's, he's still drinking his coffee, as you notice. No, it's gone now. I, oh, I powered through it. He powered right through it. And now my mouth tastes like coconut, which is going to totally throw off the taste of this. Oh, one. no, no, this Sour will totally wipe out. it out. Okay, you guys. So we put some uh, extra butter on there. This can now go over here, out of the way. All right, Chris, you want to do the favors and put some uh, garlic powder on that bread and make sure it's plenty garlicky. Go ahead, let's bring it a little closer here. Oh, sorry, Kyle. Kyle, you'll have to adjust your camera focus up there on the top. Oh, it's okay. I will, hey, I'll oh. do just that. I don't want to go too crazy here, but you know, enough oh, to yeah, get it get, all over the place. Get, get crazy enough, yeah. Garlic is delicious and you pretty much almost can't uh, overdo it, you guys. And so Chris is not trying to overdo it. Oh man. You can't overdo it. <laughs> <laughs> and I have overdone it. 
You have overdone it? I, my, okay. You know, my question is, when it comes to garlic and you're using fresh garlic versus the cut up garlic in the mm -hmm. jars, mm -hmm. they taste completely different to me. I mean, it doesn't even taste like garlic in the the stuff that comes in the jar. Is there a reason mm -hmm. behind that? What What is the... Fresh, fresh garlic is always going to I be mean, better. I guess than I just must yeah. be a garlic snob, and it has to be fresh. Yeah, you are a garlic snob. That's so. that's okay. All right, so now we're going to add some oregano onto this, you guys. Which, for those pizza fans out there, oregano is one of the common pizza spices. So we're adding some oregano on this bad boy. All right. Repeat. We are not making a pizza. We are not making a pizza, <laughs> but it's going to kind of look like one when we're done. Here you go, Chris. Let's let's get some shredded cheese on there. And none of us have washed our hands, just to give you guys a nightmare out there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and he peed right before this. <laughs> oh, no. Kyle, where are What's the suckers? The cause, what do you mean, you know. oh, no? <laughs> no. I'll just put a napkin over Enough of that board. potty talk. I'll just, I'll just cover my napkins. By the way, you guys, Cash and Carry right now has that big five-pound chunk of... Uh, uh, Tillamook cheddar cheese on sale for like 16 bucks right now if you guys are looking for a gigantic block of cheese that you shred yourself. Ginormous. <laughs> Get all of it there. Out of Kyle, I think <laughs> it's on the table out there. Would you go on the outside kitchen table there real quick? I think there's a, there's a canister out there that has the cooked beef in it because we're going to add beef on top of this bread. Damn Damn that Where's that the thing. Beef? Where's the beef? Oh, uh, yeah, the spatula. Oh, yeah, the spatula. Yeah, yeah. You would like the spatula. Yes, the there spatula. You go. Yeah, let's get... <laughs> 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 Something just went... <laughs> that was a little bit of butter. That was a little bit of butter. Just kind of went flying. Kyle missed that. Good I mean, news. That was like All right, fantastic. One for the spoof reel. All right, you guys. We have also here... Um, this is actually some um, beef that we cooked before the show. It also fried in butter. You can see it looks a little on the dark side here. Do you, do you, have, to have, the, do you have to have the beef? Yeah, yeah. You have, you have to, to have the beef? You have to have the beef. Not that I don't like beef. I, it's just I'm trying to save some room because me and a friend are going to hit that new Thai place, you know, after. Oh. It's just a little bit. Just a little bit. And, and we're going to review it, you guys. We're going to take some pictures of uh, the food that we get, and then we'll share them with you guys. Ooh. I still have to review rest. This is only four ounces. A total of four ounces. So this, you're going to end up with... Uh, no. I want to know. Man, I'm so excited. And hungry. All right, so oh. we're not done with this yet. Um, we also have some cayenne pepper. And you guys, adding a little cayenne pepper on this is, is important because cayenne pepper helps your digestive tract uh, secrete more enzymes for digestion. So oh, I'm going to add a little. You know, Kyle, look at that. Oh. I know. Now, Rip, uh, Jeffrey Rip says, thanks for the badge. The thing is, though, we don't control the badges. That's all Facebook. So it's, yeah, hey, by the way, just a, it's a surprise bit. for us. So you're the first. Congratulations. All right. This is going to have some little bit of kick to it. Maybe maybe not as much kick as Chris likes because he likes really spicy food. That's okay, Jeffrey. I got visual storyteller. Yeah. That's what my tag is. Visual storyteller. Yes. I am one of those guys that, you know, there just wouldn't be a Facebook if I wasn't around. <laughs> All right, you guys. Now this is actually crushed red pepper. <clears throat> oh, hey Kevin, we got a question. Karen wants to know if this is pasture-raised, grass-fed beef. Yes. Wow. Absolutely. Isn't okay. All, we're now, adding some crushed red pepper to this. Uh, now don't laugh. We want Kyle to have beads of sweat on his forehead when he's over there. But isn't eating. all Angus beef grass-fed? No. I thought pretty much. I thought that was the the huge thing about Angus is that it was all grass fed. <laughs> Where somebody raises the cow is completely their business. So some is, some isn't. I well, would Kevin, assume that it is. Can you assure me that this cow didn't fart? <laughs> because if it does, we need to tax it. It is a um, Ocasio Cortez cow. <laughs> Methane. Uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's crazy. You'll see all the uh, tax collectors actually going to every single farm, even going to a. Uh, um, Africa, because there's a lot of termites there. So. All right, Kyle. So build an ingredients list here. Ingredients list. Yes. It's for including our the ones that, you know. It begins. Okay. It begins. I need you to help me develop. One one last thing. We're gonna put a little dusting of some Parmesan on these breads. Oh, just now, see, you can't go wrong with Parmesan. Yep. Here we go. Man, I just think about this uh, funny comic strip. Basically, someone's like, "Yeah, I'm doing this keto diet," and they're like, "Why do you have a?" whole 
cheese wheel parmesan they're like keto <laughs> keto <laughs> so they just have yeah. this huge I'm pretty sure parmesan. this is going to th pick up every single one of your carbs for the day too by the way <laughs> <laughs> well it, that also depends because it depends on how check much check this out people check that out doesn't that look just delicious? Now I know it kind of looks like scrambled eggs, but it isn't. It's not scrambled eggs. And it's it not is, an omelet. It is sourdough bread, fried in butter, both sides. And then, of course, we have... Uh, Kevin, they get a little toasty on the bottom. All right, let's uh, plate them. There you go. Oh, no, it begins. It's been plated. It's been plated. You have to separate those, get a little melted Gotta cheese on them. keep them separated. Yeah, I like that song. Thank you. <laughs> I don't think All I have right, enough space in my go. stomach for this. It's almost like the plate's not... Oh, oh no. here, you got this burnt cheese on the bottom of the pan. It's just delicious. I better take care of that. <laughs> yeah, you better take care of that, Chris. <laughs> we don't want it to actually burn and stick All right, you want to turn the... that heat off over no, there. I'm pretty sure that that's my fault. Right there. <clears throat> yep, that's yours. Go ahead and crank the heat off on that so that we can turn that pan off. Gotta keep it separated. There we go, guys. There is a Mac Daddy. Show it to him, Kyle. That is a Mac Daddy piece of sourdough fried in butter. Now, here's what I'd say. Um, think about your intermittent fasting you're doing each day. Because we, we actually don't eat... None of us now at this table eat breakfast anymore. We all start yeah. our... Our, our meals midday. And so I have essentially one meal a day now, and then I will add in additional nutrients, fruits and veggies and stuff like that over the next few hours um, following my lunch period. And then that's my meals for the day. So I could actually do something like this twice a week, like pretty easily um, in, in my diet and have no issues whatsoever with carbs and or going out of ketosis. Been in ketosis for a long time. Ketosis. Oof, I can hear that crunch. Mmm. To all the people wondering what it looks like, I got a uh, close-up photo. That is so good. <laughs> this is so good, you guys. I'm not even eating it. I'm already sweating. Oh, no. Download. Check that out. Delish. You know, you think of the gourmet garlic bread that they'll make sometimes at these high-end restaurants and stuff like that. Doesn't even come close to competing with this. This is delicious. Yeah, it's pretty well, good. Well, you guys, we also are going to be enjoying a vinaigrette salad uh, here in a moment. Man, this is like my favorite part of the show, where we eat in front of you, and you guys get hungry. Yeah, and everybody's out there in the viewing audience going, oh, man. Yeah, you know. What's, what's great is, is that showtime starts at 1030, so you guys have to watch this before you go to lunch. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry for the constant crushing. See, I think it'd be cool on Wednesdays to pick a winner off the viewership. And they could come in the following Friday and be on the show and try what we're making to cook. Mm. We could absolutely You'd be fed lunch that, that day. Send us your Put business your, cards. Yeah. Ma mail us your business cards. We'll do a drawing. Yeah, send us your contact if you would like to be on one of our Wednesday fo food shows and you can enjoy the lunch with us. You'll nice. get a, a free keto lunch. And you get to hang out with Kyle. Mm hmm I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to attack this. And the reason being is because Chris and I will be hanging out over here. And so you'll be hanging out with Kyle over there. Yeah. That's how it works. I like the hot pepper flakes. It gives that that spice. Mm-hmm. So this is just like you would eat a single piece of this for a meal? Yeah. Do you even really need to add anything else? I, I do a salad, you know, a, a fruit or vegetable with it. Um, quite often eat a grapefruit with it. Quite often we'll have like a half an avocado with it. Um, and then some form of salad. So 
We brought some salad along today, so we'll enjoy a little bit of that here in just a moment. We did a, a nice vinaigrette. We did a nice chef salad last night. Pretty good. The kids hate it when we do that for dinner because, you know, they want all the other food and all the other junk. My house is almost like when you go to the kitchen, most of all the, the junk food is mostly gone now. Now think about this. <laughs> if you didn't have that fried in butter and we didn't do the things that we did to this piece of bread, think how easy it is for a typical American diet, you know, who's not eating keto type foods and not eating a healthy diet. Think how easy it is to throw a bunch of meat, cheese, lettuce, everything else in there and put two pieces of bread and make this monster salad or monster sandwich out of out of these uh, sourdough bread slices and then even want another sandwich after it's all said and done. That is true. Wow. Hmm. But Chris, you're like halfway through your piece of bread. Can you see why you only need one? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> you know what, you guys? This would be perfect for like a little hors d'oeuvre tray if you were mm -hmm. having like a little party. Ooh, like you make like five or six of these pieces of bread and then you cut them into slice little pieces. Slice them up into, yep. Or you just get like little little ones, you know? Mm -hmm. So you can mm -hmm. get like a tight mm -hmm. sourdough roll and just... Yeah, you can get those little sourdough round breads from Safeway and you could cut them and do them single that way. But I think it would probably be cheaper to buy a loaf this way and do it this way. Mm -hmm. um, but this is this would be... And, and you could play with this. I mean, you don't have to have... Uh, hamburger on here. I mean, you could try something like ham or. Yep, you can do any number of or ingredients. Or any, on any it. kind yep. of. You're so, exactly talking right. about ingredients, you want to list a couple so I can get it to the audience? Well, let's pop uh, sour. You want to start with sourdough bread. And you're going to flip it a couple of times in the, in the pan, but fried in butter, both sides. It should be butter saturated too when it's all said and done. Yeah, you guys might as well just get your own cow if you're going to do the keto because you're going to be eating a lot of butter. Butter. And then the uh, Clinton says, you were talking you were talking coconut oil. I also like to fry things in coconut oil in addition to butter. It really makes the flavor pop and is healthy as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, Make sure that you're using organic, unrefined coconut oil. Of course, mm -hmm. science will come along next week and tell us we're all wrong. But, you know, it's whatever. It's probably like E. coli and coconut oil now. Um, so, we got sourdough bread fried in butter both sides. Next Fried step. in butter both sides. Then we uh, put some shredded cheddar cheese on it. Kyle said he was hungry. I'm starting to not believe him. I mean, look how much bread he still has. Yeah. I mean, it's not like he's been totally tekken out or anything. He, he's just, I don't know if he likes it. No, I, I, I do like it. It's just I hear the crunching. <laughs> so I apologize for the viewers. <laughs> just nothing but crunch. Mm. If you get the mic close enough to my mouth, I wonder if they could hear me crunch. Oh, no, they can. I can, I can hear you. <laughs> I can hear you. Don't worry. You don't have to do that. Oh, no. Can, they, can you hear that pretty good? Yeah. <laughs> That's how crunchy. Just so you guys know, that's what it looks like on the bottom. Well, you can't really see that. It's delicious. You're gonna look. It's gonna look like the bottom's burnt, but it's not. It's just like really toasted. You guys see? Yeah. Kind of like just like if you did it in a toaster. And while you can hear the crunch, when you actually bite into it, <laughs> you're you're kind of surprised by how um, how easy it is to eat because that crunchiness is a butter saturated piece of bread. Yeah. Sourdough. Michael Ferrick says, a lot of chewing, not much talking. Hey, Clinton. <laughs> now, see, now Clinton Franks is talking my language here. Go ahead and read that, Ka. Clinton Franks says, I have a real news story for you. Involves some of the top city officials in Kelso. Get a hold of me, and I will give you all the documentation and proof. Hey, Clinton, does it have anything to do with secret meetings with other council members around <laughs> town, just out of curiosity? <laughs> it just does out of curiosity, it? I may have heard something about that. Does it? About some kind of secret meetings of going around the mayor, and I, I, I don't know. I, I, does it have anything to do with that? Jeff Rip says coconut oil is great for stir fry. That's what he does. Um, Clinton says smell a vision. Yeah, smell we totally, vision. totally. Yeah. Did you guys hear, like about a, that, hear about that? Though? Well, I know at California Dreams. You know they have a ride. You know where you go on oh. it, and they, when you fly over the the orange blossom trees, they spray an orange smell in the in the thing, so all you can smell is the oranges. 
Um, so I kind of associate it with something like so that. So er, you, you guys know what VR is. Um, so basically, the next step in VR is VR that actually does smell. And they have like this cartridge you just put on the VR mask, and they ha you know they have the ears, so you have the sound, you have the visual, you have um, the, when you look around, it's virtual reality. But now they're trying to figure out the smells. Now this smell is able to do 150 different types of smells. But think about this, right? You're playing like Resident Evil. You you're, you're fighting corpses. You, you're going to smell those zombies. So it's 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 you know it's probably. <laughs> It's it's cool. It gets you you know into it, but at the same time, it's probably going to smell pretty bad. So you guys, we're going to follow this up with a small salad, and this has spinach leaf in it, uh, some diced up mushroom, a little bit of sliced I'm olive. I'm doing it. I'm eating. You got to make room for your salad, Kyle. It's I, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip out on the salad. You're gonna skip because I have to save some some room. Well, you can try it. You can try a, a couple small right, bites right, of right, it. Right, right, right. I'm getting kind of full from the bread, and so this is kind of causing me a isn't, panic. Isn't isn't that something, you guys? Chris is a foodie, a food lover. We well, eat a lot less when you do keto. And and he's eating one slice of sourdough bread, and he's he's getting concerned because he, he's not gonna have room for food later. One slice of bread, you guys. See the magic of the butter and the cheese and the. All the good keto stuff, yeah. So Fat satiates you. So what type of peppers do they put on there? Uh, cayenne pepper, crushed red pepper, some Parmesan cheese. Actually, behind the peppers, put oregano. We Is share this building with other people, uh, Clinton, and I guarantee you right now, they are smelling what we're cooking. Oh, they <laughs> are always out there in the hallway later. They're like, oh, man, you guys didn't invite us in for lunch, man. That's delicious. What are you cooking over there? Yeah. Yeah, fat makes everything uh, just smell, <laughs> not just taste delicious, but smell delicious. Shredded cheese, cayenne, and crushed red pepper, oregano. Oregano uh, and Parmesan cheese. And Parmesan Oh, and, and, and the last part was some granulated beef. Oh, yeah. The beef and... Granulated. You, you mean hamburger? Yeah, it's... <laughs> yeah, when it's, but it's granulated because it's pulverized into like small granules of beef. And and it was it was also fried in butter and with some peppers and cayenne. So it was the beef was uh, slightly caramelized by the time it was popped on here. So um, that's what gives it also that nice crunchy and kick. Kick, yeah. Now, why are we using cayenne peppers? Good. Point. Improves uh, um, digestive enzyme production. So does crushed red pepper. Both, any peppers will. Anything spicy. Anything spicy will improve your enzyme production in your gut. It gets uh, things really going. Yep. You know, it actually helps you burn fat, too, as well as from some things I've read. Yep. So here's something I'm going to add on top of this um, salad, you guys. Um, Steph pre-mixed this for us. It is some olive oil. It has uh, some apple cider vinegar in it. So it's like um, oil and vinegar vinaigrette that she's made here and a fair bit of crushed red pepper as well. So that's what's in here for the salad dressing. I'm gonna pour this over the salad. Dizork on Twitch says, bon appetit. Bon appetit. Yes, we are bon appetiting. No question about it. All right, so I'm just gonna mix this in here a little bit. You hear about PAX East tomorrow? PAX East? Mm-hmm. Tell me about it. Okay. Tell us about it. Well, PAX East is a, it's a big gaming expo. So mm -hmm. Gearbox is going to be there, um, EA, basically a lot of gaming manufacturers and game developers are going to be there. And tomorrow, I'm so excited for it, but we have a show during the time, so I'm a bit sad about it at the same time. Um, but Gearbox rented out a whole room for an hour, and they're saying it's for their new game, but they're not telling anyone what game. Now, they literally literally just released a teaser trailer Chris, for tomorrow, and just their a, just a new game, bit. and it's it's Borderlands Mayhem. Same win. Perfect. Oh, it's amazing. The, the trailer is just... It's Kyle? How, the trailer is just... It's how you do a trailer. It's crazy. Crazy good. And 
it has so much content in it, and people are literally picking it apart. There's like, on the top left corner, they have Morse code, like a little dot that appears, and it does Morse code. In the bottom right, they have a Braille. So it's like, in the video, you have to literally stop, rewind. Oh, wait, okay, yeah, there's a code right there. Oh, there's a code right there. Oh, there's a code right there. And it's just crazy. So Gearbox tomorrow for an entire hour will be talking about their new game, which people are hoping is Borderlands 3 or the next series in Borderlands. He's just really excited about Borderlands. You We've can been actually, waiting. by the way, by the hey, way Kyle, you can put, you can put that salad right on top of your bread if you'd like to. Oh, that's exactly what I'm doing. Welcome to do that. Yeah. I'm going to soak right in. But Borderlands 2 came out six years ago, maybe seven. Um, my freshman year, I'm uh, two years graduated. So it... It, it's, we've been a long time since Borderlands 2. Of course, there's the pre sequel, but that's not really. No one really counts that as a game. Um, it's more of a very expensive DLC. It's not a. It's not that good. But it's. Oh, man, we've I been like waiting for so long. Better. Great what? show. <laughs> <laughs> good news. Well, I want to comment on something uh, briefly because it was a. We had some. Reaction to a couple comments we made on our last Friday show. And we were actually talking about, <laughs> oh no! We were actually talking about uh, some local politics, <laughs> and I simply want to say this: that if if there is some supposed validity to us giving any feedback whatsoever on an 18-year-old kid who's running for public office, if that is somehow bullying or somehow negative or somehow bad or somehow shouldn't be done. What you're saying is that scrutiny should not be given to anybody running for public office because you're talking about an adult world. And if a young child who you want you want people to think is this young boy or young child and somebody who should not be um, should not receive any constructive criticism, if all of that is true, then you're making a fantastic argument for why kids shouldn't be in politics to begin with. Mm. I mean, that's that's it. Period. This end is the hard end of story. Well, the, the Mic drop. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> to, to think that, that people aren't going to talk about the the positives and the neg negatives of a current candidate that has thrown themselves into the public arena and think that that person isn't going to get any flack or push back or be questioned at all, uh, you're wrong. Um, you know, when you throw your hat in the ring, you suspect, you know, you are. Uh, in the public eye, and there are going to be things that are said about you that you won't like. And there's going to be things said about you that you will like. Um, but if, you know, again, I I, I think he's going to win his race, you guys. And I didn't see anything wrong uh, with the comments you made. I mean, Absolutely I've heard. I, you know, I tried to explain to some of these people that were upset that uh, yeah. you guys aren't the first people I've heard say that exact same comment. Yeah, so and the, and the I, I comment mean. was to this, you guys. <laughs> we, we were talking about, because there was an article written in the uh, TDN, and the comment by the candidate <coughs> was to say, we are not forming a voting block by doing this. Now, there's only one reason why you'd say that, is because that actually is what's happening. Right. I mean, this you, you guys criticized a candidate for something that he talked about himself. So, I, again, you're going to have some people out there uh, that if you even look wrong at this young candidate, they're going to call you a bully. Mm -hmm. Everything you do, if you go negative against this person or you even talk about legitimate things against this person, you're going to become a bully. And if, and, and if all of that had any legitimate argument whatsoever, that's exactly why the person shouldn't be running for public office, period. Right. And you know, and you, there's going to be resistance. There's going to be pushback. And if he gets a candidate, you better believe a candidate is going to hammer on his age and inexperience. That's just the way it's going to go. It even happened in a presidential election mm -hmm. where, you know, Ronald Reagan came out and says, I will not hold my opponent's age against him. <laughs> <laughs> age and inexperience, yes. Yes. Yeah. So, this, I mean, and that person it's, was a heck of a lot it's, older it's, yeah, than 18 yeah, years and, old. And it's yeah. legitimate criticism because, uh, you know, this, this youngster, two years ago, had an article in the newspaper that said that he was, was going to be, he wanted to be the youngest uh, city councilman in Longview. Mm -hmm. And at this point in time, a whole bunch of people came rushing to this kid and was like, yeah, we got somebody from the, you know, in the younger age, in the future, let's get him ready to run for office. And that's what they've done. So, you know, I can understand the concerns of a possible voting block being made. And you better believe uh, that the people that don't see to eye to eye with this person will be out there pushing that they're going to have a voting block because they do all the same 
thing, same the thing. This young man went out. Well, he's been taken under the wing and cultivated and developed by current sitting council right. people. Well, right? I, there's I, yeah. th that that's been obvious for right. already for some time. Right. And so, you you can't say that a individual who is very much like minded with the people that have supported him all the way up until this time and who already currently sit on the council, you, you're adding another voice of the same perspective to a group of people that is there. That that is the that is the abundant truth. Now, if if you like what you have, go ahead and put the person into office. If you don't like what you're seeing on council, you might want a different voice because you are going to absolutely get the exact same mindset of what you already have there. I mean, that's really basically what it boils right. down to. I went to uh, his campaign party launch, you know, last week, and uh, you know, it, it's not. It was a good little party. Uh, you know, he has a good platform. They actually live streamed this event out to the internet, mm -hmm. and that is something that I would not have done at this point in time. I, there's no way I would have done a live stream uh, this early in the game, talking about exactly what my platform is, uh, arming the other team, arming mm -hmm. the people that want to run against him. They now know what his platform is. They mm -hmm. can now organize and they can come up with a, just a smoking candidate to put up against them, all because they live streamed this this to the internet. They will now be able to pick apart. They'll be able to look at his platform. They'll be able to do, you know, look at everything that he was talking about, and they will now be able to counter that from day one of filing an opponent against him. So mm -hmm. I would have waited until at least filing week was over before I would have done any campaign live streams. Uh, I think that that was a serious mistake. Let, let me just address a couple other issues too. Is that I I do think that there is a maturity concern. And let me share why I say that. It, well, first of all, that all the, the, the reactions that took place um, over the weekend were actually even more indication that there's a maturity concern. Because I wouldn't have, if I was 18 years old and decided to make that effort, I wouldn't have my mom, my dad, my colleagues, or whoever going here and there and trying to defend me against public. It, it'd be, that's just, I, I would never, ever do that. Yeah. But but let me share with you something, Chris. You remember, roughly two years ago, when we were we were actually uh, broadcasting. Then we were live streaming a candidate forum that took place, and I had just we we had done some work in the past with this young guy, and he was on the broadcast desk with us. And I took him off for a number of reasons, and but one of them was um, a very highly opinionated viewpoint with absolutely nothing to back it up. Y young kid who has really lived. No life has really no substance or experience behind all that, and yet very opinionated and, and lacks some maturity. And so I said, you know what? Um, let's rethink this. There's some other ways that we can we can integrate you into what we're doing, but you sitting on our broadcast desk isn't one of them. And the reaction to that was him them later meeting us at a candidate forum outside, and his mother and the person I believe is either his dad or stepdad showing up there. And the comments they made, his mom made, were so obscene and so vulgar that I just told her, you're going to have to find a respectful bone in your body before we continue this conversation. And for now, it's done. And I just turned around and walked away from him. I visited with this, this uh, young guy afterwards, and I just said, hey, you're welcome to come talk to me anytime, um, as well as your mother. But she's going to have to start with an apology before, before um, that conversation even begins. That has never happened. And my question to him and, and my even text messages that I still have that I sent to him uh, just said, you know, you're, you're trying to work in an adult world and yet you're treating all of your responses to it like a child. And, and this, the, the phone call that I received this weekend from a city council member was basically a continuation of that, you guys. It's it's another adult, a much older seasoned, experienced adult, which that's what you would expect for somebody who's on a council. But this individual calls me. So Spencer didn't call you himself. About I didn't the receive a call made. from the the youngster so at all. I had somebody else do it. Uh, another older person calls me and asks me to really f frame my comments. There was a little bit of defense against that. You know, this voting block we were referring to. That it that it didn't exist, but in in fact it does. It and the the current council, if they're going to provide provide any pushback against that argument, is going to have to maintain significant distance between themselves well, and this you know candidate. What, again, if it's, there's if there's it's an a unbelievable story, if there's a challenge 
a challenge, then that proves that there are community members that are worried about the voting block. If somebody yeah. challenges. And, and, and I and think people in the community have every right to challenge that. Right. And, and you better believe that anybody that challenges him mm -hmm. is going to say probably three times meaner things than what you said on, on Friday. With, yeah, it was just and, nothing and but honest journalistic feedback, period. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I, I went. It'll be an interesting race to watch run. Um, and, you know, he, he is more on the conservative side. If you watch his shows and his opinions, he, he is more on the conservative side. So I fully expect uh, somebody with opposing views to challenge him. Mm -hmm. And if they're smart. It's it's very early in right, the season, right. and, and I would expect that'll probably happen. Yeah, and, and I imagine they're probably going to get somebody that will just hammer economics. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when it comes to voting in our area, economics, job growth, uh, family wage jobs, those are important things. And, and that's so completely his kryptonite because he doesn't have anything in the way of any kind of work experience. He still understands the struggle, though, from you know growing up in the house here in Cowles County. You can't grow up in Cowles County and not know uh, and, and not struggle. Right, I but, mean, I, wouldn't, just, I, but mean, I wouldn't say anybody's kid and anybody's household understands job growth, right. economics, you know, the struggle to any right. extent that any adult does. And, and just because we talk about and say things on the show, doesn't mean that we don't like the person either. Bingo. Because I like Spencer. I, Bingo. I think it's, Spencer's you know, a nice guys, guy. It's just honest feedback. And, and, if, and if it's hurtful in some way, well, then I would say get the kid out of politics. Right. Don't, well, don't be running here, for a here's, public here's office that, if, yeah, if that's the, supposedly hurtful. The people that I talk to uh, that, aren't, that, that just don't understand this issue at all because they haven't been behind the scenes in this, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, he... The cat, the cat, the cat is welcome to come on this broadcast. By the way, you guys, and it's have a better to with get the these show. discussions out of the way now. Mm -hmm. These are legitimate concerns, legitimate issues that he's going to face in his campaign. And if we're out here throwing them out here now, discussing about it, this disarms the argument later on down the road. It's you guys. the tip of the what iceberg. Part, Address it right what now. Part of this, don't you guys understand? This isn't a harm by tearing somebody down. This is giving criticism to somebody so that they can fix their campaign and be victorious. Okay? And you guys all called it bullying, which is a bunch of <coughs> crap. Put your big boy pants on and get over it. Okay? Candidates are going to get thrown through the ringer. You see it nationwide. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, again, you were talking about what he needs to do to be better as a candidate, and people lost their minds. So you can see that this so election season is going to be just as crazy as the rest. Yes. <laughs> here, here's some suggestions that I'd actually give to the candidate because, you know, uh, and I'm, I'm speaking specifically to you now, the 18-year-old running a campaign for city council, speaking specifically to you. You have publicly gone out and disparaged other people. You might want to go fix that. You know, there's there's a in in the adult world, people understand what it means, and people for, people forgive errors that people make. When you go out and talk to them personally and apologize for those past behaviors, people get it. You know, you're a youngster growing up. Go and fix that. Go and apologize. Go talk to people. Go and apologize to them. Go and mend those broken fences. Right. Totally I'm, recommend yeah. that you go and do that. Um, secondly, is I wouldn't I wouldn't put your campaign and your promises around how you're going to lead. You're a follower. You're a youngster. At every level, every organization, everything I've ever been in, the 18-year-old the wasn't the leader of anything. You're, you're a follower. But what you can do, what your, your central message could be, is how you help connect the community and its government with the younger generations. That you could do. But don't talk to me about, about, a, uh, about entrepreneurial development. Don't talk to me about business development. Don't talk to me about how, about how you're going to lead in all the categories in which you have zero experience with. Because you have to recognize that you only had just a part-time job, a very small role, a part-time job. And you quit that part-time job to run for another part-time job, which is a city council position. This is not a career. In fact, there, I, don't, I don't know of anybody who can live off a $600 a month city council position. You have to be doing something else. I would recommend that you don't quit any work opportunities you have just to run for city council. You won't find one single responsible, reasonable adult who will do that in, in right. anywhere. And, and the other thing. So, yeah. so that's what I'd say is, is you know what, and, and put on your big boy pants and stop having 
other senior council people or your mom or your dad or anybody else because this is an adult world and deal with all these struggles, challenges, etc. yourself and directly with the people. Well, Kevin, don't this, ask others I, I don't to do believe this that Spencer behalf. was, his feelings were hurt by that comment. It I, was other people around him that, that sound the alarm. And Well, those and, people as well <laughs> then need to put on their big boy and right. big girl Well, pants, here's something else nonsense. that we need to clarify for our viewers is our show structure on Friday. Our show structure on Friday is what you call a roundtable discussion show, mm -hmm. which means it's not a newscast. Do you understand? It's not a newscast. It is a show on Friday where we get together and we talk about issues real time. Mm -hmm. We don't put boxing gloves on. We don't put mouth guards in. We say what needs to be said. If you guys can't handle it, especially when it comes to local politics and local election stuff, uh, you mm -hmm. may not want to watch the show on Fridays. But that if you want real conversation with real criticism, real honest to God, talking about politics, tune in because we're gonna, we aren't going to hold back just because somebody's 19. And if you guys call every single person that talks to him and doesn't agree with him or it goes after him politically, a bully, he's going to lose. Yeah, you're going to totally make the argument for why a child does not belong in an adult world. I mean, that's completely it. Knock it off. You know, whatever. grow up. <laughs> I have, I, I didn't get any calls or been contacted, so I, I'm fine. <laughs> you're just the tech guy. I'm just the tech he guy. He gets to say that all the time. I'm just the tech I'm guy. Just the I'm guy. just the tech guy. Just the tech yeah. guy. <laughs> all right, you guys. Um, yeah, there's always opportunity for young people in any organizations and any you know uh, city council it could be on committees etc but you know here's here's one of my thoughts on all of this and I, I shared this a little bit with a council person who called me I just said you know we all think it's cute when our kids in a house are growing up and they say mom dad I want to be a fireman or I want to be a policeman we don't build up unrealistic expectations for them that the day they graduate that they should now go apply for the board of directors for either of those agencies we might say, you know what, go to school, get a job, learn a little life experience. Maybe you'll get lucky you can apply for and get into the police academy. Maybe one of these days you'll be a police sergeant. If you spend long enough time at a police sergeant, you might become a police captain. If you spend long enough at a police captain, you might become the chief of police. You know, if, if, you, if you spend the time, you pay your dues and everything else, you might have the opportunity to do those things. Don't expect that you'll jump out of high school and be the leader in your community because people aren't going to look to an 18, 19 year old kid for leadership. You know, that's, Kevin, just, that's just the basic truth. I think so. And so yeah. go out and turn yourself into a leader and show people that you can lead in other smaller ways and in your own life. And then, then maybe there's something to consider there. But uh, I, I'm, I'm not saying that a person absolutely shouldn't run for city council if, there's eight, if they're 18, 19 years old. But I'm gonna tell you right now, if your friends, your family, your colleagues, the people around you feel inclined to play mom and dad and go out there and defend on your behalf, then you're probably in an arena you don't belong in. Yeah, Kevin, you know, I, I think that we could blow this whole thing out of the water and expose all kinds of wonderful things in Callas County to our citizens and our voters. If we did something, uh, it, it, it would take a little bit of work and would do a little bit of research. But after this election season, there's a point in time where you can go over a PAC's book, mm -hmm. you know, like Realtors PAC, uh, any, any political PAC that's out there, and you can go over the books to find out who donated money mm -hmm. to who. Mm -hmm. And I think that our, in our area would be super interested and probably shocked when they see all the money in the elections on these PACs, who's spending the money and, uh, you know, what's going on with them. I, I think that that would probably shed a whole lot of light on things here in Cowlitz County. But mm -hmm. that, that's something that, you know, if people want to, you know, we, we could do that. We can expose all these PACs who's in them because they're terrified. Oh, I'm a part of this PAC. I, I, I can't, you can't associate me with any of this. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, really? Well, you know, your PAC is, is uh, public. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you want to play that role where you're going to hide behind a PAC, I'll just expose the PAC and put your name out there with everybody else that's in the PAC because mm -hmm. that can be done. So, you know, if they want to continue or they want to, you know, be like adults, then let's do, let's, let's do the adult thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, investigating the packs, throw the names out there, I think that would uh, shed a lot of light on things. All right. Well, 
<laughs> we said that our Friday is usually a round table open discussion show. It is. Wednesdays are usually generally just about food. But you know, we gave you a little food for thought today as well. And in part because we have received feedback from people that expressed concern about just some basic journalistic honesty that we shared on Friday. And that's it, guys. Sorry for the truth. Yeah, I took a positive. Sorry for the truth. You know, I, yeah. I was like, hey, I think the guy's going to win. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, just me. All right. I, I <laughs> well, that's a wrap here on Northwest Digital News. Thanks to everybody who joined us here for the broadcast at any time. You can put your comments or feedback in the uh, broadcast here. We always take a look at that, not only just during the live shows, but afterwards. And always take that into consideration. Kevin Hunter, Chris Bornstead, and Kyle Torgerson. Until next time, take care. This concludes today's live programming on Northwest Digital News. Thanks for joining us for this special broadcast. Heard around the world in more than 70 countries on YouTube, Instagram, Patreon, Facebook, and Twitch TV. If you enjoyed a story or guest we had here on Northwest Digital News and would like to strut your stuff on the broadcast, email us today at wainfo2017 at gmail.com or call or text 360-545-3501. We're always interested in unique stories, topics, and guests to share with our worldwide audience. Before you go, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and comment on the live stream. And for those of you who'd like to financially support the broadcast, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash Northwest Digital News. We thank you for your patronage. On behalf of Chris Bornstead, Kyle Torgerson, Stephanie Hunter, and all the people that made this broadcast possible, I'm Kevin Hunter. Till next time, take care.